Hey guys, I wanted to give you a brief tutorial on importing animation assets into Unreal Engine 4. Um, so there's two types of animation assets that we're going to import. One, I have this basic moving cube animation, which I have set up to kind of perform a looping sequence. Um, and then the other is this boned animation. So if I um, bring up my outliner here, you'll notice that I have a root bone and two spine bones. And then also I can toggle my bone display on and off in the viewport. Um, and this animation uses bones to move this cylinder. So it's just a really simple animation, but it should get the idea across. Um, now there's a couple of things that I need to point out to you about how these two types of animations work. Um, at the current time in uh, Unreal 4.9, um, I don't, do not believe that there's a way to combine um, hierarchy-based animation, which is basically just the movement of objects in a scene, um, with bone-driven animations. Um, so you essentially have to make either one or the other. And if you have bones in your animation, you need to make sure that you have a root bone where all the other bone animations are extending off of it. So um, really quickly, I'm going to go through the process of exporting and importing these animations. And then I'm going to show you how to get them into Unreal um, in kind of the simplest way possible. Then there's some more advanced things that we can do. Um, but this should just give you a basic idea of how it works. Um, so OK, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this uh, bone animation, and I'm going to export it. Um, so in this case, because all of my stuff is clean here, I don't have any additional stuff that I want to export. I'm just going to export all. Um, and I'm going to export it as cylinder bones. Um, and there's a few things that we want to watch out for. So one thing, um, I always export uh, smoothing groups. You don't have to export smooth mesh, but it doesn't actually really make a difference. Um, you need to make sure that you have animations checked. Um, now, this may not be explicitly required because it does work in both cases, but I always check bake animation before I, um, I export content. And so in this case, my animation only goes to frame 120, so I want to make sure that my start and end is 1 to 120. But as a reference, the number that it puts into the end is the default number that is actually your total number of frames in the animation timeline. So even if you're only displaying 120, if it says the actual total number of frames is 200, that's what's going to show up here. Um, and if you don't want to have to type that in, all you have to do is make sure you have the right setting for your timeline, and it will carry over. So um, I also export deformed models, skins, and blend shapes. Um, this may not apply in all animation types, but you probably want to leave it checked anyway, because it's not going to be bad to have included. Um, and other than that, you really don't have to do a whole lot else. Um, one thing that you might want to keep in mind is making sure that you have the correct units so that your scale factor is correct. You might find that some of the animations that you export came in way too small. Um, so for example, it defaults to centimeters, which would be a scale factor of one. If you went to mil millimeters, it's going to be 10 times that size. Uh, if you went, in, went to meters, it would be 0 0.01 that size. And in my case, I'm working in millimeters, so I'll get the correct result that way. So I'm just going to export that. And actually, I'm just going to do the same thing for my box. So just to reiterate these steps in case uh, we need to clarify it further. So this box, again, just has a single box, just has these animation keyframes. Um, I'm going to export all, or I could export selection. I'm going to export it as moving box. I'm going to have my smoothing groups. I'm going to make sure that I'm exporting animation is checked and baked animation is checked. And my start and end frames are was 1 to 120. I have my deform meshes. And I have the scale factor that I'm looking for. So that should be good. Um, now, some things will come up with warnings. Um, usually these things don't actually cause too much trouble, um, but you do want to pay attention if you're having some issues with your animation export that maybe the warnings that come up will tell you something um, 
didn't export correctly, and that's something you just want to keep an eye on. In this case, this says um, that it's changed some of the animation curve tangents, and that's not really a huge issue. So, um, okay. Now I'm going to jump into Unreal, and I just have a blank scene with nothing in it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a folder. So I'm going to right click and select New Folder, and I'm going to call this Moving Box. And then I'm going to make another folder. I'm going to call this uh, Cylinder Bones. And I'm going to import into each of these the relevant assets. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the Import button. And um, in my Moving Box folder, I'm going to select the Moving Box. Now, you guys may have some of these settings differently than I do. So I'm just going to make sure that I am talking through each of them. So um, one thing that you want to make sure is you, you want to import a skeletal for all animated meshes. And this may seem a little bit counterintuitive, but technically Unreal defines anything that has animations in it as having a bone system. Um, so it actually creates a bone structure for this to make it work. Um, now, import mesh, that's important because we're actually importing the animation and the mesh together. If you were to import another animation and you don't want the mesh to come with it, you can just uncheck import mesh um, and that'll allow you to import the animation by itself. Um, now, another thing that's worth noting is that if you have skeletons already in the scene um, or already in your content browser, you can select them with this skeleton option here. Um, but since we don't, we'll just leave it blank. I want to make sure import animations is correct, and I'm going to select exported time. Now, remember we set the time range for that animation uh, previously. If we did not do that, then we could actually set um, animated time, and we, it would only bring in the, the sections that have keyframes. Um, or if we did set range, um, we could click the drop down here, um, and we could actually say what the range is for the start frame and end frame. Um, now, I'm uh, really not going to mess with any of this stuff too much, but if you wanted to change the animation name, you could do this here. Um, this would also be very useful if you had to several sets of animations that you wanted to break up in a single um, animation import is you could change the start frame and end frame and you could change your animation name. Um, but in general, you should just be able to do exported time and it should work. Um, and then other than that, I'm actually just gonna go ahead and hit import. Um, now, because this is um, the moving box animation, which does not have a root bone, you're gonna get a, an error or a warning rather that says, could not find the bind pose. It will use time zero as bind pose. And that's totally fine. Um, I made sure that my starting position was at zero, 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 so that kind of helps. Um, this is just to give you an idea of like what the result of the import was. And if you get any other messages, you want to take a look at them, but they don't necessarily mean something won't work. Um, so there's a few ways of getting this uh, to work, but I want to show you the very easiest way to do it. Um, so if I drag this box out into the scene, all I actually have to do to get it to play an animation is in the details panel, I go to animation mode, and instead of using animation blueprint, I can use um, animated asset. And then under animation to play, you'll notice that I have this moving box underscore anim. And that just says anim because we didn't pick a specific name for the animation, but if we picked something else, we could play it. Um, and then I can just drag this animation and you'll notice that this uh, animation to play box actually highlights. So I can check that, and then we have looping and playing. So if I play in the editor, notice it actually kind of uh, flew off screen there. Um, so I'm actually going to, just to make it a little bit easier to see what's going on here, I'm going to drag that out so it's a little bit further away. And then we'll go ahead and play, hit play, and then you'll see that this box moves around and it goes around through my looping animation. And that, in a lot of cases, this is the only thing that you're going to need to worry about in your animation sequence. Um, so, but just to show you how the same thing works in the uh, 
cylinder, I'm going to import that one as well. So I'm going to go to my cylinder bones folder. And then I'm going to click on the import button. I'm going to grab my cylinder bones FBX. And actually, all of the settings here are going to be exactly the same as the way I did previously. We need to make sure it imports a skeletal, it includes the mesh, it imports animations, and does the exported time. Um, and you'll notice, in general, all of these assets come in when you import a single mesh. That's because you have the mesh, you have the animation, which will actually play back for you so you can see what it looks like if you double click on it. Um, we have a physics asset, which is going to be not super important for what we're working on right now, but is something that you can use to get uh, physics interactions. Um, there's a skeleton asset, which uh, basically just shows you the bones that you're dealing with. So in this case, we've got our root bone, our spine one bone, and our spine two bone. And actually, these are things that you can edit in this view so you can actually see what happens when you deform it. Um, and then we have our material, which is, uh, in this case, it just defaults to creating material that's somewhat based off of what you had in Maya or 3ds Max. So this may be a little bit more complicated if you have a few more um, nodes to work with or you assigned textures to begin with. Um, but anyway, um, so to give you an idea of something that we might um, have overlooked. Um, if we're looking at uh, an animation on an asset to see if it's working before we actually try to drop it into the scene, um, a skeletal mesh has a skeleton, a mesh, and an animation. And you'll see these, and you can switch back and forth between them in the um, animation and skeletal mesh preview window. So um, right now it doesn't have an animation, so if I want to drag my animation um, or actually rather, I don't think it will drag and drop there. So if you select the animation and then you click the, uh, click the box drop down, you can actually grab the animation that way. Um, and then you can display what it looks like here. Um, so yeah, th this is, this is the first step involved in getting an animation to run. Um, so if I go ahead and save this. I'm just going to drag my um, my cylinder here. Now, so you can use an animation blueprint to play a single animation asset, or use the animation asset the way that we just set up here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and drop this anim to play. Um, I'm dropping the animation to play here. Um, now this time I'm not going to have it loop, um, and I'll show you how that works. So in this case, the animation will play once, and then it will stop because we didn't have it set to looping. Um, now, if you don't set this to play, um, and you were to hit this, like let's say we had it set to looping but not to play. Um, so that actually will not fire off. Um, and I wanted to show you a couple of different ways that you can affect animations, including using Blueprint. So. Um, we can set up a blueprint and a matinee animation sequence, both of which would be able to play animations. So I'll just show you those bits, and then we'll probably wrap up the tutorial here, because I think that will cover mostly everything um, that you guys need to know. Um, so I'm going to go to Blueprints. I'm going to open up the level blueprint. Um, Okay, and so we've got all these nodes here already. So we have the event begin play and we have our event tick. Um, I don't think that we need to worry about tick, so I'm just gonna use uh, event begin play. Um, and what we can do is there's a few different options we can set for uh, controlling functionality of animation. So um, one of them, and I think that this might be the, uh, the easiest way to do it, is uh, we can actually play an animation directly um, by grabbing one of these actors. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in a delay. So this will give us an idea 
of the fact that this is working. So I'm going to run a delay on event begin play. And this will just show you that you can have it go for, let's say we wait for two seconds, and then we have it play. Um, so, so now that we've got our delay, um, there's a tiny little trick in getting the, um, the cylinder to display animation properly. And let me show you um, what you might possibly do wrong if you try to get um, a play node out of here. Um, so if I go to create a reference to cylinder bones 2, and then with that selected, I try to uh, call a function, and I look to, um, well, so first of all, I don't actually see any animation functions there. So if I go to the drop down in animation, I also can't see any animations. Um, and actually, um, if I go to uh, type in the word play, um, it's not going to show me anything that is at all relevant until I turn off context sensitive. And then I could uh, pick an animation play option. So I could get play anim or something like that. But what would actually happen is if I try to drag this out, it says skeletal mesh reference actor is not compatible with anim single node instance reference. Um, now, that's a weird way of saying that basically this actor, this cylinder bones too, is not sufficient. What you actually need to be using is the animation component, um, which is, a, is a, a variation of what is actually existing on that mesh. So um, a good way of thinking about this is that your cylinder bones two is actually the object. And then if you go to this section here, animation, that is a component of that object. So here's what you're gonna wanna do. Uh, with your cylinder selected, you want to create, right click and select create a reference to cylinder bones, then drag out um, a line and just drop it anywhere in the new uh, blank space. And so I'm going to type in the word play. And what I'm looking for is a specific node for play skeletal mesh component. Um, and then I could also select play animation, and we'll take a look at what each of those is. So now what this is going to do is it's going to add in another component that makes this possible to run, which is the skeletal mesh component. Um, so then if I were to hit play, then I can check to say that it's looping. Um, and then basically I just want to make sure that it's not set to playing um, in the animation component on the object so that we can actually see this working properly. So uh, let's take a look and we can watch our blueprint while it runs so I can hit play. And so there's delay and then it hits play and then it plays correctly there and it's set to looping so it'll start looping from there. Um, and that'll give you an idea of how you can set um, an animation to play in that fashion. So um, another thing we can do, so if I were to drag that scalable mesh component out type in the word play. Um, so if I did play animation scalable mesh component. Um, now what we could do here is we could make it play a new animation. So let's, um, let's actually go back to Maya really quickly and let's just make a new animation asset and we can import that. So I'm, uh, I've got my animation here. I'm actually going to save it as a new scene. Um, so I've got a cylinder bones. Um, and I'm going to call it like jump, I think. Um, and then, uh, just so that I can control this properly, I know I had my animations in my middle keyframe. So I'm going to shift double click um, in the timeline, delete all those frames. And then I'm just going to take my root bone and make a keyframe at the front and the back. I'm going to move into the middle. And I'm going to move it up so that it looks like it's jumping. Um, and now that looks like it's going really, really slow. So I'm going to copy my keys. to uh, make it standing still at frame 30 and frame 90. 
And then I'm just going to go in between, and I'm going to make smaller jumps. So just so that we have an animation to work with. So, and of course, I'm sitting here going like, I would like to make this so that it has like linear fall off and all that kind of stuff. But I'm not really worried about that. So I'm not really worried about the quality of the animation. I'd just like to, for now, um, export this so you can see how it works. Um, so I'm going to export all, and I'm going to call this cylinder bones jump. And this is also frame 120 export. So I already had the same export settings from before. Um, so in my cylinder bones section, I'm going to go to import cylinder bones jump. Um, and I am not going to import mesh this time. So I have my animation, and it's going to be the exported time. And all that should be fine. But I need to select a skeletal mesh. So this shows you an idea of how it's supposed to work when you go through the whole process, because we have our cylinder bones scalable mesh. So it's going to link it up with that skeletal mesh. And I'm going to select import. OK. So now, now that we have this new asset, it's called cylinder bones underscore jump. Um, what I can do is I can actually delete this play node, which is just the basic play. And I can plug in this play animation node, which uses that jump asset. So I can just drag the jump asset into it, or I can have something uh, I selected and then click the arrow and it'll do the same thing. Um, so, and just to show that this works properly, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up another delay. So I'm going to hit the control W. I'm going to make another delay here. Um, and this delay, I'm going to make four. And then I'm actually going to duplicate this play animation node and connect this like a skeletal mesh component. I'm going to drag the other animation into it and I am going to play that. And I'm going to set these both to looping. So um, yeah, okay. So then uh, let's let's see if we can get this to work, like if this works as intended. Um, Oh, okay, I've got to compile it. So I'm not going to play in the editor. I'm going to select to compile. Oops. Oh, this skeletal mesh component needs to have a reference. So actually, I don't think we even need that one. Let's uh, let's just use the same one that we had before. So okay, so then we just have that skeletal mesh component. Looks like it had just added one when I dropped things into the editor. So, um, okay. So then now I'm going to go ahead and play. Um, I'm going to take a look at this. So, okay. So it goes through. It does that jumping animation, which is a little weird. And then partway through, it starts doing its wiggle animation. Um, and so, actually, this is really most of how it will have to work to get animations to play properly. Um, but just to give you a full uh, viewpoint on how all of these things work, um, I also wanted to show you that you can do some of this stuff in Matinee. Okay, so because I want to show this cleanly, um, I am going to probably get everything to stop operating. Um, so I'm actually just going to delete everything out of my blueprint. And I'm going to make sure that these uh, two characters characters are not playing at the moment. Um, and I'm going to make a new matinee. So I'm going to go to matinee, add matinee. And I want skeletal mesh tracks. So I'm going to add new skeletal group. I'm going to call this box. And then I'm going to add another new skeletal group. And I'm going to call this one cylinder. Now, what's good about the skeletal groups um, is that you can add in movement as well as actually playing explicit animation. So we can move things around in the same way that we could 
any other matinee animation. Um, but let me go ahead and assign the correct objects to each of these groups. So I have this box selected, and I'm going to right click on the box. I'm going to select actors, add selected actors, and then the cylinder, right click on cylinder, actors, add selected actors. Um, and then I'm just going to extend the green play mode all the way to the end. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new animation track. So first for uh, the box. Um, so in the animation track, what I can do is I can just hit the enter key on the keyboard and I can bring up an animation sequence. And what it'll actually do is it'll automatically create a sequence in matinee that plays that entire animation. And then I can see that animation playing in the playback and I can actually adjust how fast it plays, um, or how much of it it plays, rather, um, by dragging the uh, the play mode uh, or the the play display on the left or the right. So, um, what's cool about this is it so like if you wanted to make a complex animation sequence where several things go through in turn. So like, let's say I wanted to make um, this like 25 second long animation sequence. And I want to have the box animate and then the cylinder animate. So I can then go to the cylinder. I can right click. I can select add new animation track. And then with the animation track selected, I can hit the enter key. And then it can bring up all valid animations for this animation sequence. So I can have it do its little odd jumping animation. Um, and then uh, maybe I want to go back and I want to have it do another box move animation. And then I can go into the animation again. And now this time I can have it do that kind of wiggle sequence. And so then if I, if I play this through, you'll notice that because I'm using the timeline in the same way that I use the timeline in other contexts, um, I can get this to do basically timed out animations that correspond in um, my matinee sequence. And obviously these are a little bit weird animations, so I'm not going to like vouch for those particularly. But um, And if you, if you only want to play part of the animation, you can drag it in or out to make it so it's only playing a chunk. Um, and you can move them around easily by just clicking, holding down the control key, and then you can drag them. So maybe if you, like, if we wanted to make this so that it kind of was, like, overlapping, I can hold down control. And I can get all these to work just fine. Um, and then maybe I can take it and just slide it up so that it only plays the end of this here. So, um, so now that I've got that working, I could just make a blueprint that uses my matinee sequence. So if I open up my level blueprint, I can do event begin play, but you can also use a trigger or whatever suits you. I'm going to grab my matinee sequence. I'm going to uh, create a reference to matinee actor. Then I'm going to drag my matinee actor, type in play, and then so cinematic, I can just do play. And then compile that, and then we'll just run the animation. And so you'll notice that um, with really very little effort going on here, we've actually gotten, uh, there's three different ways that you can set up an animation and have it run in Unreal Engine. And it's very, very similar to what you'll get when you just bring something straight out of Maya. Um, setting this up is actually pretty similar to how it works in Unity. It just creates slightly more asset content to work with, and the interface is a little bit more complex. Um, but you can see how using blueprints, you can easily set up a wide variety of functionality for animations. You can play multiple types of animations on the same object. Um, you can play one animation on an object and just set it to loop. or um, And you can also play animations with bones and without bones. So hopefully this gives you a good idea of um, how importing animation assets works in Unreal 4. Um, and hopefully this can get you started on making some cool moving animated stuff in Unreal. All right. Thank you.